Hey everybody, Bo Billington here. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for joining. I got Dennis Dennis Kerwin here. Thanks for joining. Nice to meet everyone. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, finding the next gear is a relatively new podcast, and it's really around you know, interviewing and having discussions with high growth entrepreneurs, and really trying to get underneath kind of the not just the the what and the where, but the why and the how. Like, how did you actually start a company? Because a lot of times, you know, we all have ideas. Um, but how do you take something from inception, an idea, to creating a business, and then actually the scaling, which um, I think is probably the hardest part about entrepreneurship. Uh, but we'll get into that. Um, so, so prior to kind of jumping into things, you always like to start with um, the who. So, so who are you? You're, you're CEO of, of Dymic, of course, and been doing it for, for quite some time, about eight years. But uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you grew up, and, and um, you know, kind of where you came from until now. Yeah, so... Um... Uh, you know, I, since you asked where I came from, I, I, um, I'll say that uh, I was born and raised in Sacramento, and then I moved to um, Southern California uh, during high school, actually. So um, I think one of the things that uh, made me who I am is, is a bit of a turbulent upbringing. So I uh, didn't have the, the stable household situation or, um, you know, we, money was always tight, that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, I, when I moved to, to uh, Los Angeles, I actually moved in with my grandmother and uh, she was one of the more stable, successful, kind of the sure. matriarch of the family and uh, someone that took me in and uh, but at the same time didn't give me anything. And so she made me work for everything. Uh, so, you know, I moved in right before I turned uh, 15 years old mm -hmm. and um, she said, hey, you're you're about to turn 15. Uh, you know, I'm sure you don't want me shopping for you for your clothes and everything else. Uh, so, you know, if you want to buy your own stuff, you're going to have to get a job. And so, um, I, as soon as I was legal to work, I was already working, I think at 15 and a half. Right. Um, and I started working and saving right away. And so, uh, I think the first lesson that she, uh, taught me was how to, um, just be responsible and how to, uh, make money, uh, and use that money wisely. So, That's awesome. um, yeah, it was nice to, to, you know, step into that environment, but, um, you know, even that was, was, uh, you know, compared to how things are nowadays was still pretty tight. I, I literally, um, when I lived with my grandmother, uh, believe it or not, um, looking back, it is it, kind of wild at the time. It seemed uh, kind of cool, but I was living in a, um, really what was a tool shed, uh, in her, in her backyard. Right. Uh, so for me at the time, it sounded, it, you know, it felt like, oh, I got my own guest house. I have my own privacy. This is cool. Sure. Um, but Sounds like a dream back, actually for a 15 year old. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, I, at the time, thankfully I didn't, I didn't feel like it was terrible. Plus uh, sadly it was kind of an upgrade from where I was coming from. So, um, you know, it, it, uh, built a lot of character, I guess, you know, yeah. and, um, I found ways to enjoy it. I enjoyed working. I enjoyed, um, being able to have a fresh start. And um, I think that really propelled me into uh, becoming an adult fast, because when I turned 18, the first thing she said was, well, you're 18. So uh, where are you moving and where's my rent in the meantime? Uh, so uh, as soon as I turned 18, I had to start paying rent. Uh, and I was like, well, if I'm going to pay rent, I'm not going to live with grandma anymore. Um, and so I, I quickly uh, moved out, I'd say within a few months after turning uh, 18 and got an apartment with a friend, and kind of the rest is history. But that's how I got down yeah. to um, Southern California from, from, uh, Northern California. I kind of stayed down here since. God, it was, it's funny to say that. So I, I started working at 15 and a half ish as well. Um, never was good at saving until I got in the latter part of my years, but I was great at spending and I enjoyed work, um, which was great. And similar story after I graduated college, a lot of my friends were moving home for six months or a year trying to figure out what's next. My mom was like, Hey, appreciate it, but, um, not going to happen. You know, go find your own place, get your own thing and go get a real job. And so I did that. And I think that, that was the, the, the big difference in kind of what's where I've gone with my career and, and where things could have been. Um, so I appreciate that segue. So talk a little bit about um, Dymic and, and how did you get excited about, you know, working like owning your own digital agency? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's one of those stories where just, you know, one thing led to another. Um, I, you know, I had different ideas and different things that I tried and, and, and didn't work out um, as I was young. I think one of the setbacks of having to, uh, you know, be on my own so fast uh, was that I, I had to jump right into uh, the working world. And it, it was very difficult to uh, get through college because I could only go uh, part time, um, you know, and I had to do that on the side and work full time ever since I was 18. So 
um, you know, that, that journey was a lot of trying to find, you know, what it is that I, I like doing um, sure. and, and where can I be successful? Um, and for me, that was always a, a, a big motivator was um, not uh, lit, continuing to live in the, the life uh, style, so to speak, that, that I had as a, as a kid, uh, you know, because uh, frankly, when, when I was young, I mean, there were, there were times where I was literally hungry and, um, you know, didn't have clothes to wear. Um, and, you know, I think that, that in a way sort of uh, scarred me a bit where I didn't want to ever have to experience that again. Um, and, I, and I think uh, more recently, I've had a business coach and this, I guess, was a few years back and then I'll kind of go back to where we were. Um, but I, I never really knew what was my big motivation. I just said, you know, I'm, I've always felt very driven. I've always um, feel like I've had this entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial spirit, but I don't know uh, where it came from. I, maybe it's just the way I was, I was wired or born. And, um, you know, that could be part of it for sure. But, uh, you know, what she, what she uncovered, my old business coach, what she said, um, you know, I think you're, you're driven by, by uh, fear and, and the, also uh, wanting to feel safe. Right. Um, and so, you know, coming from, from a turbulent uh, upbringing, um, it, 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 I don't know, for me, made me not want to go back there. Um, and so I think there, there's always that, that grit and that drive to, yeah. um, you know, do well for myself and provide for my family. Yeah, I think fear and, and anxiety can be, a, can be a great motivator. In fact, you know, one of the podcasts that I have coming up is with a, a clinical psychologist, and it's all around fear and how we can leverage it and harness it. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but that, that's interesting. And I, and I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs have the same story as you, where there's something in their life that happened that pushed them in one direction so they could basically kind of overcome um, earlier feelings in their lives, i.e. fear, anxiety, where's my next meal coming from, et cetera. Yeah, it's, it's almost um, ironic, you know, because uh, at the time that I was told that I felt like I was very fearless. Uh, I, I've always felt like I'm, you know, I'll take on any challenge. I, I um, will, you know, jump in any business idea that I believe in without worry of what's going to happen and keep my eye on the prize. And um, I realized that it was it was something more subconscious and something that um, is now ingrained in me. And uh, you know, it's not, it wasn't a conscious thought necessarily. Um, but once she explained everything to me and I thought about it, I said, you know, I think you're right. I think that's where this is coming from. So uh, it's a, it's a really interesting, you know, moment and realization that, um, you know, what you think an entrepreneur is or what their, you know, makeup is um, it, it's uh, it could be different for everyone. But for me, I think that was, and is uh, the big driver. Sure. No, I can appreciate that. And so in that vein, how long have you been an entrepreneur? So you've owned your company for eight years or so, but prior to us jumping on on the recorded line, you, you basically alluded that you've been kind of doing your own thing for much longer than that. Yeah, I, I have to say, I think I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid, maybe living that. Um, I remember um, when up in Sacramento, at least, I remember the time that uh, there was a time where you know, the, the truck coming around once a week to pick up the recycled goods wasn't a thing. Uh, at least I, in my neighborhood, I don't remember that being a thing. But I do remember the time I went with my, my mother to uh, recycle a bunch of cans that we had saved. And I, re and I realized, wow, you know, we got actual money for that. Um, and so something clicked in me and I thought it was a great idea. Well, why don't I go around um, our neighborhood, uh, you know, and, and tell people that I will collect all the recyclables and, and recycle them for them. And so I tried to make a, um, a business flyer uh, at her work, you know, printed out something on a piece of, uh, it was just a regular printer yeah. and uh, made these flyers that said at this time, this date, um, leave your recycled goods on the, uh, you know, I think cans is always going for um, on your doorstep and they will be, you know, picked up between this hour and this hour. Uh, and, you know, and I made it this whole environmental thing uh, right. to make people want to recycle. And I think I kind of learned that from school too. I remember hearing um, about recycling at school probably around that time. So I, I just put two and two together and I started um, recycling the, the the cans of my neighbors uh, to, yeah. to make a little bit of money, you know, so that I was probably in sixth grade or something at that time. So um, I, I think from that moment forward, I've always had this, uh, this drive and this interest in finding, you know, ways to, to make a business. That's great. It seems like most entrepreneurs do as well. I was, uh, I think it was around 16, 15, 16, 17, you know, I started cutting mowing grass, which I know a lot of folks do, but it was kind of like, I, I had this drive, this innate ability as well to kind of go out and, 
and, and, and get business, you know, and knock on doors and a little bit fearless. And maybe, you know, maybe there was some, some of that fearlessness came from, from my growing up as well. Um, but it's funny how we all had like, you know, early things that we were doing, which, which eventually, you know, became our, our day jobs later. Um, right. So that's great. I think that was your, your question was, how did I get to where I am now? Um, so I think that was uh, the beginning. I guess the point I was making is that um, I feel like I kind of got into this industry by accident. Um, you know, I started working for other businesses at first when I was 18, you know, stable, more mainstream companies. I think my first uh, real job out of high school was working for Lexus. Um, you know, and from there, I you know, actually met uh, one of the Lexus customers. Um, and, I, and I think that he was very interested in having me work for his um, venture capital company, raising money for startups. And, um, you know, looking at the car that he drove, which was a, a nice brand new uh, at the time, 1998 GS 400 with all the bells and whistles. I was like, man, that car, if I could just have a car like that, uh, I'd be I'd be stoked. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he just seemed like a guy who had it really put together and was doing well and said, you know, he asked me what I was making there. Uh, and I told him and he said, well, you know, if you work for me, you're going to make at least twice that much. Uh, so that was an easy decision to, to uh, put in my notice and, and go to work for him. And, um, you know, him being one of their uh, customers, I think they were happy to see me kind of level up and go uh, work for that guy. And so I got into um, the venture capital world and, and um, got into sales and started, uh, you know, helping uh, generate leads for um, their venture capitalists to ultimately bring uh, clients on board and raise money for startups. And I think um, as technology advanced um, and, you know, digital marketing became more part of the equation uh, for those startups, I think that's when it started to become more interesting to me. Um, you know, the last uh, recession uh, that happened uh, back in, what was it, 07, 08, right around there, um, that, that one definitely, uh, I felt that, you know, um, I had eventually started my own venture capital company after working in venture capital for a number of years. And, um, you know, I started raising money for startups uh, through my own uh, business. And, uh, and of course, when the last recession happened, people uh, weren't exactly looking to put money into startups at that time. People were, um, you know, being cautious. And so things slowed down really fast. And um, I suddenly was in a situation where uh, I needed to figure out a way to pivot and make money because the music stopped pretty quickly um, in that world at that time. And so uh, one of my buddies that was still uh, doing quite well, even mm -hmm. during the recession, um, he actually recommended uh, that I reach out to this internet marketing company. And um, they were an Inc. 500 uh, internet marketing company, mm -hmm. uh, specifically specializing in, in search engine optimization, which was uh, really a hot market at that time, especially. Um, I think there was a bit of a gold rush going on in that market. And so salespeople uh, were, were doing very well there. And so, um, you know, I thought maybe it was a good fit. And uh, at the same time, I was hungry and I needed to make money. Sure. Um, and so I went there, interviewed, uh, got a job. And I started all over again. I started at the bottom. They made me a telemarketer. Uh, it was the biggest piece of humble pie I've ever eaten in my life, um, having to go from uh, having my own venture capital company with employees uh, to taking a starting position at an internet marketing company as a telemarketer. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of looked in the mirror and I said, you know, look, are you going to let your ego get the best of you? Or are you going to realize that uh, you are where you are mainly? Yes, there, there's been a big shakeup in the economy, but as you can see, there are still people doing well. And so if there are other people doing well, uh, you should be able to do well. Right. And so um, I, I looked around and I realized there were people there making money. And I, I just started taking notes. I said, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. And I, I'm going to start um, paving, uh, paving the way to, to, to rise to the top of this place. And so uh, that's, that's what I did. I just you know, had my blinders on, nose of grindstone, um, started making phone calls, started getting people interested in the services. Um, and then I became uh, a sales manager, I think within the first six months. Um, and then I became uh, the, the director of uh, international business development is what they, um, you know, my title was at the time, I would say within uh, a year, year and a half, um, mm -hmm. and I actually helped them set up an office in the UK. Um, nice. And, uh, you know, things were going really well. Um, so how did I get to the point where I started my own company after that? Uh, it, it was a big Google algorithm. And um, that company 
uh, was a company that was specializing in SEO. And that was really their bread and butter. And Google decided to do uh, two major algorithm updates back to back, which were known as uh, Peng, uh, Penguin and Panda back in, you know, uh, it's like circa 2011, 2012. And I think they recently did another one, um, is my understanding. Yeah, they're doing them all the time. Um, I, I actually uh, just got done grinding out a very long article that I submitted to Forbes, um, which will probably go live in about a week. Nice. Um, and it's all about the latest Google algorithm, which is called uh, it's Core Web Vitals and Page Experience Update. Um, so they do these pretty often. And if you're not prepared and, and don't keep your finger on the pulse with Google, um, it could really be a, a, a painful surprise. Now, in the defense of uh, my old company, this was a time that Google was operating a little more of a black box. Um, so they had, uh, you know, a guy um, named Matt Cutts that worked for Google that would, you know, want, once a week do these kind of video <clears throat> blogs and talk about what Google's looking for. But he was always vague um, and never really told you exactly uh, what the ranking factors are, probably because they didn't want people to know the secret sauce and try to, you know, game the system. And so um, long story short, uh, over that year of the two major, major algorithm updates, um, my prior company started to have some trouble. And uh, they were suddenly in a position where they were losing clients, uh, clients were losing rankings. Um, and, and of course, me as somebody who really cares about my clients and the people that I bring in, into a business endeavor or people that are, um, you know, trusted my, my advice, my guidance uh, to, to do marketing in this case. Um, it, it, for me, uh, it didn't, it didn't sit well with me. I, I immediately started thinking, um, you know, this is a great company. They were very good at what they did. They got to Inc, Inc 500 status and I don't know, something like seven years, five years, something like that. And, and so they, they were doing great, but they're just not, um, the pivot isn't happening enough, at least for me. Mm -hmm. And so I started to think about, um, maybe there's a, there's a way to build a better mousetrap. Maybe there's um, more to, to marketing than just SEO. And I already kind of knew that from working there and people asking me about other services, whether it be uh, mm -hmm. you know, social media marketing or web design. And um, there were just certain things my company didn't do at that time and that I felt like it was a missed opportunity. Um, and so uh, the long and short of it is at some point, uh, I guess there was a tipping point where um, you know, a couple of the other leaders had already left the company and um, started their own. And uh, at some point, they invited me to join uh, with them and uh, to work at their company. Um, and so uh, we basically became partners. Uh, I, I put in my notice that company. Um, it was tough. You know, I, I really admired the CEO there. He loved me working there. Um, I was, you know, a, a very important part of his company and uh, he didn't want me to go. He tried uh, keeping me um, longer. Um, and, and, you know, I just felt like it was time for a change. Uh, so I felt bad um, because I, I really did uh, like him and like the company um, and, and I enjoyed working there. And so it, it was, you know, and I'm a loyal guy. And so it was very difficult. Um, but, uh, you know, we decided to, to get our company going and um, I, I put in the proper notice there and we said, hey, let's let's uh, try to be that end to end marketing agency mm -hmm. that people seem to want. Um, it, it was becoming clear to me that a lot of people out there with businesses had fragmented marketing campaigns. They're working with multiple vendors. Okay. It was just yeah. getting messy. And I, I said, let's, let's help people clean up that mess and bring it all into one place. And so that was really our sort of mission at the time. Um, and we, we really strive to do that. And we had to kind of knock down one service at a time and master it. And, and, you know, the first couple of years of our business, mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. I mean, we were right, right. very fortunate to score a big account early on, which helped fund a lot of our, our, uh, you know, ideas. Um, but that client didn't stay forever. And, uh, when they, when they left, um, it was, you know, it was a bit of a wake up call because, um, we had built all these different, uh, departments and things, um, and and uh, suddenly uh, there was a massive loss of revenue uh, just yeah. after the first year of being in business. And, and I think that's what, just to interject real quick, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make. And I myself made that same mistake the first two years of my business, where I think at one point I had like 70 percent of my revenue coming from one company. And, you know, if that dries up, I mean, again, that's, that's a significant loss. 70 percent. You know, you yeah. can't live off 30 percent. Yep. So I, I think one of the things that entrepreneurs need to do, especially, you know, budding ones is ensure that they're kind of, you know, hedging 
and you know don't have all their eggs in one basket and make sure to kind of diversify the customer portfolio because things do happen. COVID happens, companies go out of business, they get acquired, um, leadership changes. Yep. And it happens all the time. And so I think that's a, a good message that you kind of you know, put out there in the, in the ether because it's a lot of people get caught that way and, and companies go out of business because they just, again, invest too much around one, one account. That's exactly what happened. And yep. um, it sounds like we had a similar experience there. And it, it certainly was a learning opportunity. And, um, you know, anytime we make a big mistake you know, in life in general, that's, that's what we have to do, right? We have to just learn um, what, how do we do things differently next time? And you know, that's, that's unfortunately exactly what we did was we had kind of all our eggs in that basket and we didn't think they were going anywhere. And we we're really focused on trying to make that client happy. And we weren't uh, focused enough on, um, you know, getting a lot of other clients and diversifying and, um, and so that, that tunnel vision, unfortunately, um, blindsided us a little bit at early on, but, um, as I said, it was a wake up call and we were able to, thankfully we had, we had put some money aside from, uh, from that campaign and we were able to grind it out. And I think, um, that was one of those moments where I wasn't sure if I made a mistake, uh, by starting my own company, um, in, in, and, uh, you know, truth be told, it was really my wife that now wife, she wasn't at the time, uh, but we had been together for some time already. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, kind of venting about how difficult things were and uh, maybe I should, you know, go back and work for somebody else. And um, she talked me out of it. And I, I think great. she- You don't she hear that often. Me. What's that? You don't hear that often. Usually it's like, yes, please, this is too stressful. You know, I want a stable, stable paycheck. Please go back to corporate America. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think- in fact, that when we got married, that was one of the things I, I um, kind of vaguely mentioned in our in our vows was um, that that moment uh, because she believed in me more right. than I believed in myself at that time, um, and it was nice to have someone that has your back and gives you that reassurance and reminds you, hey, you've you've accomplished some pretty impressive things over the years. Is what she told me, and you know you you should have the confidence to get through this, and I think it will pay off if you stick it out. And, um, you know, from that moment, I, that's exactly what I did. I, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to just give up when the times get tough here. I'm, I'm going to stick this out. And this is, I, I'm kind of in control of my own destiny now with, with my company. And right. um, I, I need to prove that I can do this. Uh, and so um, we, we really uh, worked hard uh, for that year following the loss of that big client and, and <clears throat> did diversify and did, um, you know, get, uh, many clients all over the country and um, all kinds of different industries and cast a really wide net, built a sales team um, and, and experienced a nice uh, steady seven years of growth um, every Great. single year until COVID happened. And, and that was where uh, things started to get a little turbulent again. But I'm happy to say that, you know, we've stabilized and got through that, um, sure. which was another big recent challenge we had to, to get through like many people. Yeah, I think many people, and also too, I think about entrepreneurship is that, you know, I, I, I kind it to a house of cards, you know, even though I've been in business four and a half years, almost five years, I've got a client base, you know, life's relatively good and, and we're stable, but you, you never know. I mean, COVID was a huge wake up call for me. I think for there's about six or seven weeks straight where literally I couldn't get customers to answer my calls, even customers I've been working with for two years. And so you, you just never know what's going to happen. And, um, you know, I, I think part of that, though, is perseverance. You just got to you got to get up every day. You got to work every day and you got to you got to fight every day. Uh, and that's that's really kind of the best way to get through the situations similar to COVID or losing your biggest account. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So so you've been in business eight years. You guys have an end to end, you know, digital agency. You know, what is your role now at the company? I mean, I realize you're CEO, but that's that's a bit nebulous. I mean, are you kind of, you know, um, number one business development individual? Are you kind of, you know, face of the company out and about? Are you working on ops? Like, what does your role look like now? <clears throat> That's a great question. I think it's uh, a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, you know, uh, as uh, probably a lot of mid-sized companies experience when you um, are working full-time for your own business, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you, you end up wearing a lot of hats. And, uh, you know, of course, we're striving to um, always make that uh, as organized as possible and, and more siloed. Um, you know, it's, I think one of the pitfalls that many businesses run into is um, they get caught up in too many different activities and they can't really uh, scale up because of that messiness. Um, so that's really been, I think the last uh, year since, since, uh, you know, following COVID 
has been one of our focal points is, is um, you know, strengthening the foundation and making sure that uh, we're highly organized and that we know what the duties and responsibilities are um, of the other partners. Because I do have uh, two business partners. Um, and, you know, I think that the first six years or so that we were in business, uh, we we're really, uh, you know, shooting from the hip a lot of the time. Um, you know, just, just kind of rolling with the punches and, and um, grinding and, and, you know, running a, running a company and, and doing pretty good at it considering we were more or less, you know, sales managers from another company that started a business together. Um, you know, all of us with our own life experiences and business experiences, but um, none, we weren't formally groomed to run a, a marketing agency, I guess you could say. We had experiences that came in handy, uh, but there was yeah. still a lot to learn and a lot that we did learn as, as we were um, getting going. Uh, so I think, um, you know, fast forward and now we, we were able to, right before COVID started, actually, we hired uh, someone um, that was originally consulting our mm -hmm. business. And later we made him our COO. Um, and he was able to be on the outside and, and look in and say, here, here are where you guys are falling short. Uh, here are the areas that you need to improve. Um, and he was very good at laying that out. And um, he, he made uh, what he called a state of the union speech and, um, you know, dissected our company, put it under a microscope and, and told us where our shortcomings were and um, where we could improve. And it was um, a tough pill as well to hear some of those things. Um, but at the same time, you know, that's how we all get better is you, you, you find out what, where you're making mistakes and you try to get, you try to improve. And so um, that's what we did. And uh, it, it's worked out quite well. We've, we've become more integrated. Um, we really want to be able to practice what we preach and not, not only uh, help people with their online marketing and their, um, you know, integrated marketing strategy, but in order to really effectively do that, we have to accomplish that and be good at it ourselves. Right. Um, and so I think that this past year, um, especially with how rapidly things are uh, changing and how fast technology is accelerating uh, in, into just a completely different dimension, um, you know, we have to sort of keep up with this light speed of change and, and uh, dial, our, dial in our own business. And so uh, we, we really have focused on that this past year and uh, are now confidently um, offering those solutions. Uh, actually, just this, this past month, we started ramping up our own online marketing campaign after we launched our new website with the, the, the all the new uh, web copy that speaks to the challenges that businesses have, have experienced this past year, especially. Um, and so I'm really excited about this next chapter in our business. I feel uh, like we have a much better foundation and uh, we're, we're ready to help people, um, you know, uh, thrive in the, in the new normal that we're all living in. Yeah, no, I think you brought up a good point. Um, you know, it's all about knowing your, uh, your identity, right? And, and knowing kind of what you do, what you do well, and, and what you don't do well, or maybe what you shouldn't be doing. And, you know, I, I've been in business for four and a half years. And I think, you know, just within the last month, I had, a, I had an epiphany um, in regards to kind of my company's identity and where we need to be in the marketplace specifically. Um, and I've been dead set from th that point forward on, on where we're going to play. And I think it's really important for any company that's going to grow is, 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 you know, distilling it down to the things that you do well and, and putting a bit, you know, creating a business around that and productizing that, if you will. Um, you know, when I first started, it was, you know, we were more kind of like a, a jack of all trades, which is a master of none. And that's also really hard to articulate. You know, it's really hard to kind of come up with a, a tight value proposition if you do everything. Right. And so I think it's really important to kind of, again, know your company's identity, what you do, what you do well, and of course, eat your own dog food, which it seems like you guys, um, have, have begun doing, which is important in your space, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, awesome. So, so a couple of other questions, just, just jumping in here. You mentioned that, you know, when you first started your company, you had some partners and, and you, you explained pretty clearly on kind of how that, how that came to, um, which is great. Uh, you also mentioned that you were lucky enough to kind of find your, your first account, which is a, a large account within the first year. What did that look like? I mean, would you, did you leverage existing relationships? Did you get lucky with a cold call? And what were you doing prior? You know, how were you kind of floating the business prior to, to landing this account? And how'd you expand from there? Yeah, I would say at the very beginning, there was a lot of uh, self-funding. Um, yeah. You know, we, we all, all three of us were making pretty good money um, mm -hmm. at our previous company. Uh, and, you know, we were able to pivot quickly enough uh, to where um, 
we didn't start experiencing at least um, to a detrimental degree of the loss of that good income. Um, it, right. it, it certainly started to dip uh, before we left. And, um, you know, we were able to put our resources together uh, to start the company. And, and um, very early on, uh, one of my business partners um, had a, a business connection um, through another person that he knows and um, they were able to bring the opportunity to the table for us. And, um, you know, because, I, I, you know, we all have sales backgrounds, myself and my two business partners, I think that really helped us facilitate the deal. Um, you know, we were at a place where our company was uh, very new and uh, which made the, the sales process even harder uh, to convince a, a large national franchise uh, to do business with you when you are so new, uh, it takes a lot of salesmanship, I guess you could say. Um, but uh, we were able to put together a very compelling uh, proposal and uh, they liked us. And so they decided to give us a shot. And so, um, you know, we're very fortunate to have scored that deal uh, very early uh, in the development of our company. Um, and it certainly helped fuel and propel um, us into the next chapter of our business. And I think without that deal, uh, we probably wouldn't have been able to survive. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally understand. And I, I've been there as well. I think it took me seven months to find my first comp, you know, customer, uh, which is a long time. You know, I, I did, did relatively well prior to jumping out, you know, built a house, had my second kid, um, you know, married. And um, then I decided to jump out of corporate America. And so you, you really, I mean, it's, you're, you got to find success quickly. And it's a very, very nerve wracking situation. I think most people don't don't and can't grasp what it's yeah. really like, you know, no paycheck coming in. And then once you get a customer, I mean, you're still dependent on their, their payment terms, net 30, net 60, you know, maybe you don't get paid until the project's complete. I mean, it's a, it's a hairy, hairy situation, but then you get the first customer and it's kind of like, all right, we, we did this, you know, rinse and repeat, you know, you basically try to replicate that model and then go find other customers in the marketplace that where you did similar business. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, I think that is one of the things that a lot of people, um, find outside of their comfort zone. Um, I, I don't think that everyone, um, wants to, or, or has the ability or however you want to put it, uh, you know, the, the, um, <clears throat> I guess you could say the, 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 the grit to grind through, Right. Um, dry moments in a business or tough times. And in, in our case, we we're in, and it sounds like you may have experienced this yourself too. Um, there were uh, several months where not only was I not getting paid and working my tail off, um, yeah. I was actually taking money out of my IRA account and putting it into the business and paying the penalties of cashing that out prematurely. Yes. Um, yeah. That is something a lot of people would just not do. Um, and, you know, believe me, uh, it is, much more uh, comfortable uh, working for another business than it is running your own business. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and I think a lot of people like that, that feeling of, of comfort and safety, and I don't blame them. Um, I certainly miss the, the ability to just be able to punch out at the end of the day right. and, uh, you know, not think about the business. Um, and, and I don't think I can do that anymore. And, and I think uh, one of the things I'd say that is, has been challenging running a company is that feeling of, not being able to, um, at least for me, uh, feel like I can mentally check out and I just kind of always have it on my mind. Um, so, yeah. you know, it has, uh, it's pros and cons of, of running business. Yeah. I think um, that we're going to accompany those. It, there's a, there's a false security with that. And I think COVID shown us, you know, better than anything that you're not necessarily any safer, right? I mean, right. yes, you have a, you have a weekly recurring pay, you know, paycheck, but, um, you know, that, that doesn't, you can still get laid off. Right. Right. Um, and I had a similar situation as well, where I, I leveraged some of my IRA too, just for the few, first few months to kind of keep things going. Um, I, I promised my wife no change in lifestyle, which is probably not a good decision. Um, but uh, so I, I kind of was in the same situation, same boat, totally get it. Um, and also too, when you're not finding success, you're, you're wondering, hey, is, is the business model flawed? Am I flawed? You know, was, was my hunch incorrect? And all these things are going on, you know, going on behind the scenes. And uh it's a, it's a pretty, um, pretty interesting situation, but again, then you find a little bit of success and, you know, you really need to sit down and figure out how you can turn that, that little win into more wins. And, uh, you know, the one thing that I, I've kind of seen with, with regards to entrepreneurship is the biggest trait. And I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts on this, but perseverance, 
I think that, you know, perseverance has kind of helped me stay in business uh, and get, get past, you know, those six, those three, four extra months that I needed to to start my company. You know, when I first started, I I really thought that it was going to take me three months to, to, you know, begin getting revenue. And then within eight months, I replaced my income and, oh man, it was, uh, it was far from that. You know, perseverance is what made me get to the place where I am now because I never gave up and kept fighting and digging for gold. Yep. Yeah. So what, so what do you think that uh, the number one trait for entrepreneurs that find success is um, versus those that don't? I, I think that could be it. Um, you know, I feel like uh, just having that, that drive and um, the, the, the tenacity and, and yeah. just the, uh, the willing to, the willingness to continue to grind um, even when uh, you might not be finding the oil that you're digging for right. or the gold that you're, you're looking for uh, and you're just digging and digging and it's just not happening, but you're, you know, and to get through that is um, it's a, it's a mental battle. And so, I, I feel that uh, maybe it's my life experiences that I had where I went through some pretty crazy times and uh, my childhood uh, possibly uh, that's what, um, you know, I guess molded me into um you know, who I am. And, and it, for me, I was able to get through it perhaps because of that. Um, and maybe for other people who had much more stable upbringings and um, maybe they're even wired differently. They, they, they just don't want to stomach or maybe they just don't have the desire to go through that. <laughs> you know uh, it's certainly a choice. In in my case, I could have uh, continued working at the company mm-hmm. I was at or uh, got a job somewhere else. And I, I suppose that would have probably been easier. Um, but, you know, it, it, I've always had this, drive and this, um, desire to, to run my own company, uh, right. as I mentioned earlier, ever since I was, I was young. So I, I think that's where that, um, you know, where, where that came from. Yeah, me, me too. And also you have to just embrace the suck. I mean, you mentioned earlier that you wish you could turn it off and, you know, I, I feel that way sometimes, but I've also too come to the realization and conclusion that this is the path I've chosen. Right. And so when I go on vacation, if I'm going to go out on the beach on just a, you know, pick a random day, a Thursday, you know, I'm going to need to pick up my iPad or get on my phone and go through some emails for 30 minutes before I'm kind of reach that level of comfortability that I can walk away. And right. when I first started my company, I struggled with that because I wanted to be able to completely unplug. And that was, that was one of the reasons I want to start doing my own thing. But then I, I finally realized that that's, that's not the path that I chose. Right. And mm-hmm. so ever since I was, I, I got came to the realization that that was not going away and I've been able to kind of embrace it. And it's part of it. I'm going on vacation tomorrow for a few days and bring an iPad and uh, I will yeah. be doing some work. So when I get back to work on Tuesday, you know, my inbox is small and I don't have a lot of catch up. Just part of, part of what we chose. Yeah. I, I suppose for uh, folks like us that, you know, are, are, are running a company and have a similar mindset that uh, it, it's less stressful to just check the email for 30 minutes than to think what, what's going on with my business and just, no, I'm not turning on any, any devices today. Um, I'm just going to relax on the, on the beach. Well, um, it sounds like you might be in the same boat as me where you can't really relax unless you feel like everything's under control. Um, so I'm the same way. I I think I've gotten better at it. Um, you know, probably you too, uh, with, with, uh, taking a vacation and being able for the most part to, to enjoy it and, uh, focus on spending time with my family or whatever it is I'm doing and, um, try to try to shut that off. But, you know, I always leave the line of communication open in case something comes up that needs my attention. But I think all, you know, part of um, growing a business is uh, hopefully uh, part of part of that that um, part of the goal is to to get to a place where you can rely on others and where you oh, can get yes. people to um, have your back and for the most part um, keep the gears turning while you're not there. And uh, and I think that's something that we've improved on for sure um, over the years. But it doesn't mean uh, that we can completely turn off, right? Uh, so I, I I feel you on that one. I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. I'd say you know check the emails maybe in the morning then you know, maybe at night and, uh, and then have my phone on just in case. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's what we signed up for, unfortunately. Um, so if you could go back, you know, to, to a younger dentist and give yourself, you know, one piece of advice, you know, prior to starting your company, what would that be? What would you have done a little bit differently? Um, you know, not, not take things for granted. Um, I, and specifically in this case, I'm, I'm referring to that, uh, large client that we had. Um, you know, I think that we were, um, I don't know, almost a a borderline fat cat syndrome pretty early on from that client and felt like um, we just had this this blind confidence that, uh, yeah, they're going to stick around and then we're going to get other companies like them. Um, And I I think that, uh, you know, it it was uh, 
very humbling experience uh, to realize that, wait a minute, uh, they can just leave totally. uh, when the contract's up. And then what are you going to do then? And uh, so if I can go back in time and, and um, sit down with myself before we started the company, I would have said, uh, you know, don't take things for granted. Assume you're going to lose that deal. And then what are you going to do when you lose that deal? And then while you have the deal, what are you going to do to stabilize the company and make sure that it's not going to rock the boat uh, when they do leave? And um, yeah, yeah, I don't think we, we were thinking that way. I, I just feel like uh, we were, we were um, you know, fat and happy, so to speak, and just uh, really enjoying that deal and, and kind of focusing on that client and, um, you know, nurturing that relationship. And, um, you know, one of those things happen where you just don't know it's going to happen. Well, what happens when that, na- that, that relationship you nurtured is with somebody who leaves that company? <laughs> you know, so um, I guess you don't know what you don't know, but we didn't see that coming. We didn't think about it. And, and running a business is certainly a chess game. You have to think multiple steps ahead um, and plan for the worst, as we can see, especially with this past year. You just don't know what's going to happen. And um, you, you have to be as prepared as possible. And, and sometimes that's still not enough. Um, no, that's great. That's, that's, that's very uh, sage advice. And I, I kind of had a similar situation as, it's, as well. And it's funny how there's similarities. You know, we do different things. We're from different places, but a lot of similarities in our stories. Same thing happened to me. I had like, a, it's like my second or third client, you know, got them. They're big and they're big for me, especially. Uh, they got acquired like, you know, six mm-hmm. months into our relationship by a very large company, which I knew would preclude me from pr- preclude me from having a relationship with them. So I was out. Um, and then yeah. the, the big uh, learning experience for me was that you always have continuously have to be hustling, always have to be hustling, always looking for new business, new relationships. Um, so, cause those situations will present themselves. And then conversely, the flip side of that is that sometimes you have to fire customers. I had, I fi- have fired two customers in the last three weeks that just, wow. you know, um, no longer kind of fit the mold in regards to what I ex- you know, expect out of a partner of mine. Yeah. So again, so you need to be hustling and you can't take relationships for granted because they change, be it on their side or your own side. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, um, we certainly learned from that, you know, and I, I, ever since then, believe me, we've been, we've been grinding. And um, even though we've had, uh, we've experienced nice growth uh, for, for, you know, straight seven years, um, uh, it, we still worked hard. And uh, I, I think we were all a little bit uh, um, damaged from that experience and, and uh, knew that um, anything could happen in any time. And, and I, I feel like we all worked harder after that moment. Absolutely. No, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, and again, just uh, in recent days, I've had a few things fall out of the sales funnel that were just about guaranteed. And so you, yep. you never know. And if you don't have enough, I don't want to say residual, but enough things kind of in the hopper or the funnel that's really where you expose yourself. Yeah. It's, it's an, it's an old sales tactic too, is, um, you know, to not, when it comes to, to business development, get so focused on one deal you think you have, or, or, uh, you know, one hot lead. Um, it's all about continuing to make sure you have a full pipeline. Um, and so that if one falls out, uh, you know, it doesn't emotionally wreck you, uh, that you lost that, that, uh, yeah. that deal. Right. So, um, yeah, I, we've gotten really good at that too. It's just trying to make sure that we have a steady flow of leads coming yeah. in at all times. So, um, you know, we, we always have new business and inevitably uh, some people are going to back out or it's not going to go through. And um, that's why it's important to, to keep that lead generation going and to keep that pipeline full. It can, it can pipeline or no pipeline. It can still be a bit tough to stomach. I mean, last week I had a couple yeah. of things that were pretty significant that just kind of just disappeared. And again, they were, they were sure things and, you still, it still hurt, even though, even though I've, I've, I've got the full funnel and I'm not too concerned about them, you know, lacking or, or not being in, you know, in our revenue number, it's still, it still hurt. It's still, it's oh, still for sure. Hurt. Well, I took it personally a little bit, which, which happened. Yeah, I, I felt one of those this week. So I, I know, believe me, I'm not, uh, I guess I'm not completely calloused. I still feel it a little bit too. Um, yeah. I, I think I've gotten better at, at taking those uh, punches to the chin, you know, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, they still sting a little bit for sure. Absolutely. So let's get to the lightning round here. Just going to ask you a few questions real quick, um, burn through them. So what's your favorite aspect about being your own boss? I I would say the, the feeling, uh, that I'm in control, even though that's probably not real. Um, (laughs) uh, you know, I've learned, um, through a lot of, uh, just life coaching and stuff like that over the years, um, that, uh, my desire to feel like I'm in control is from not having a lot of control, uh, when I was younger and this, yeah. it's funny because I've, I've traveled a lot and I've, um, you know, 
flown all over the world and done all these things. Right. But I still am not comfortable on planes. Um, and, you know, part of that reason is because I'm not the one with the steering wheel. Um, and so I feel like my fate is in someone else's hands. And I really don't like that feeling. And, and logically, planes are super safe. I mean, they're way safer than driving. Yet when I drive my car, I feel like I'm in total control. I feel very comfortable. No anxiety. Yeah. None. I feel, I feel great. And so I love driving. Um, I don't like flying, but I fly all the time. I just flew again last week. So, I mean, I, I do it uh, and I get through it because I know it's my own problem. And I, I, and strangely enough, I feel like maybe that's one of the things I love about running my own company is I, I don't have that kind of looming anxiety of like what's going to happen or what, um, you know, it, it, it's just, I feel like I have this, uh, this kind of, um, I'm, I'm in control of my own destiny is how I feel. Um, whether that's true or not, uh, that, that's the feeling I like uh, of running a business. It doesn't matter if it's true or not, right? Whatever, whatever keeps you going. Yeah, whatever, whatever helps me sleep at night, sleep right? Tonight. Right. Um, so what's your least favorite part about being your own boss? Um, you know, kind of, kind of what you were talking about, just, um, yeah, I find myself, I find myself having a difficult time at times where I, I should check out and should turn off and not think about the business. And, you know, it could, it could just be, yep. uh, had a really heavy day at work. A lot of stuff happened and I try to, um, you know, go have dinner with my family and, and, uh, you know, it's sometimes hard to just focus and, and yeah, you're like, you're like halfway happy. there. And, and I, I do the same right. halfway there, or I'll, I'll tell my wife sometimes too, it's like, I need 10 minutes. Just give me 10 minutes. Let me finish, tie this thing off. Yeah. And I can be with you guys. Otherwise you're going to get 50% of me and nobody wins. Hey, that's good advice. I should, I should probably try that out. Um, yeah. Sometimes I just, you know, I, I can find my mind wandering a little better at checkout and someone might notice that it doesn't look like um, I'm hundred percent focused and uh, mm -hmm. on being present in that moment. Um, and I, it's definitely something I'm, I'm becoming more aware of and working on. Um, but I would say that that feeling of not being able to turn it off or check out, I, I didn't have that feeling before uh, right. when I was working for somebody else. I, I felt okay. like I was able to go have fun and do whatever and not think about it. And I think that's the one thing that um, I'm not a huge fan of. It, yeah, uh, it's something I'm trying to get a better, better handle on. But um, it's, that's, a, it's that's a struggle, a man. I, same way. Like I used to I would take off when I worked at corporate America to go play golf completely relaxed because everybody yep. I was off and, and they knew not to disturb me. And now if I go play golf, you know, it, it's, it's, it's generally the busiest day for, for whatever reason, it's just how, how, it, how it works out. But I'm busy, I'm getting calls, things are blowing up and it's, it's less enjoyable. Um, but again, it's part of the, the plot of the entrepreneur, what we signed up for. Um, we're, so we're living a similar <laughs> life in that, that regard with golf too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what's, what's your big, what would you consider your biggest success? Um, you know, I'd say the biggest success, um, the first thing that comes to mind is that that uh, big account we landed when we started the company, um, yeah. which I guess you could say is also our, our biggest failure was 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 losing that that client. Um, uh, so I, I would say that's what comes to mind first. But I, I think more recently, just being able to um, get through another really uh, turbulent, uh, you know, uncertain time this, this past year and, and still be able to keep our head above water and run a business and um, help other people also keep their head above water. And I feel very good about that. And, um, that gives me a sense of accomplishment uh, is, uh, you know, that stability of feeling like I can get through anything, um, with the business. So that I would say more recently, uh, is a big sense of accomplishment that I've had with the, with the company. Yeah, I think that's great. I think it's a great perspective too. I feel most companies, you know, if you can make it through situations, just COVID like you're golden. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the way that I'm kind of treating this whole thing. Like I revenues were up this past year, you know, not as high as I thought they would be and not as high as mm -hmm. probably they should be, but made it through. And so like, I mean, if I can get through that crap, like right. I'm not, not even worried about it. Right. Um, so I was going to ask about your biggest failure, but I think you, you've alluded to that a couple of times about losing your biggest account. Yeah. You know, it, it's, 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 it's bound to happen to, to any entrepreneur out there. It's happened to me, um, happened to you. Um, you know, now it's kind of old hat, to be honest with you. Like you're going to get accounts and things are going to happen. People are going to leave, yep. et cetera. Um, what would you say the hardest part about having your own business is? Is that the inability to, to unplug? Um, is it kind of the stress? Like, you know, I'm, I'm up at 3 a.m. almost every day. Like, what, what is the hardest part? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, I woke up today at 4 a.m. with no alarm um, yeah. and I went to bed at 11. So, um, you, you know, more that, sleep, Dennis. what's that? You need more sleep. I do. Yeah. No, I usually get six hours and I feel like that's enough sleep. Maybe it's not. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, that's one thing that's, that, that's been tough too, is um, with so many things on my mind and um, 
that, that comes from the business. It just really occupies your brain a lot of the time. And I feel like that's what um, keeps me up sometimes at night. And what makes me rise early um, is I just have all these things that I, I know that I need to do um, or take care of, uh, you know, or, or goals or things that we're striving towards that I'm just, you know, really eager to, to accomplish or, or achieve. Um, and so because of that, uh, you know, you know, you don't uh, sleep like a baby at night, at least I don't. And, and get maybe the needed eight hours of sleep or whatever it is. I know it's a little bit different for everybody, but I could probably use more than five to six hours of sleep a night, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. What I've started doing, and, and you've been doing this thing longer than me, so I should probably take an advice from you, but like I've, I've put like a you know notepad next to my bed. You know, of course, my phone, the blue light's off. And if, if I come up with an idea or something goes through that I know I need to take care of, I'll just go ahead and just pony up and write it down. It's good. I feel that kind of allows my mind to escape a little bit. And most of the time I go to sleep and that doesn't happen every night. I mean, you know, and as you know, sometimes too, you'll be dreaming or something will happen and you'll just like wake up and like, Oh man, it's genius. I got to try yeah. this tomorrow. And then, then it can be kind of comical looking back at your notepad about what you wrote down. Cause it's completely nonsense. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So something, something I've, I've tried and it's, it's been helpful for me. Um, so it is great, man. I really appreciate you joining uh, in closing. Where can people find you and find more about you? Yeah, so our website is dymic.com. That's D Y M I C.com. Kind of like short for dynamic. You know, it's not a real word, but um, that's that's the uh, website URL. Um, we'll, and, put it on uh, the, uh, we'll put it on the video as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I would say that's the, the primary place. You know, I'm also a, a contributor on Forbes. So um, keep an eye out for my articles. I try to get them out there about once a quarter. I do have one coming out. Um, supposed to be in the next week or two. And it's, uh, if you have any interest in what Google's doing and their uh, search algorithm, I spent a long time uh, writing, <laughs> writing that article more than I'd like to admit. Sure. Um, and good so there's a lot paper. of good information in there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, Dennis, yeah. really appreciate you taking the time today. Sincerely, I appreciate it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll put up your information so people know how to find you and uh, keep fighting the good fight, my man. You Thanks too. For Thanks on. for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Likewise. All right. We'll be in touch. Bye for now.